Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf, which is Yevamais Pezayin. We are at the Mishnah on Pevavam and Bez, six lines from the bottom. It says the Mishnah Ba'as Yisrael. So she's an Isha from a family of Yisrael, unentitled to a Truma or to Masar. And then she goes ahead and marries a Kayin. So this Bas Yisrael Shanisas Lekayin can now access Truma, Toichal Truma, on account of her husband, the Kayin. Meis, Kayin passes away. Velohi ben, and she has a son from him. Toichal Truma, she maintains her Truma privileges on account of that son, which connects her to Kahuna. She moves on to the next husband, who happens to be a Levi. So she has this son, but now... She's over to the Levi, Nisus the Levi. She's now been downgraded on account of her husband. No longer Truma, but rather Maser. Toichal be Maser. She can have Maser Rishain on account of her husband, but no longer Truma because she's, in essence, a, a non Kayhenis right now because of her association, because of her connection to the Levi husband. Mace. Mr. Levi passes away. And she has a son from him. Once again, that connects her to the Levi concept. She maintains her Maaser rights. She moves on to the next husband, Nisus Yisrael, who happens to be an ordinary Jew. At this point, no Truma or Maaser is accessible to her because she is married to a Yisrael. Meis, Velohe Menu Ben, he passes away, leaving behind a son who is also a Yisrael. She maintains that status. She can't access Truma or Masa on account of this son, through which she identifies as a Yisraelis. Now, suppose tragedy strikes, Meis Bnami Yisrael. This Yisrael son leaves the scene. Toichal Masar. Now she reverts back to her previous status. She sort, of, she sort of takes a step back. See, initially she had Truma, down to Maser, down to just Hulan. This son from the Yisrael passes away, after the husband passed away. She's no longer bound to him or his family. She goes back a step and associates with her son that she had from the Levi, the second husband, which enables her Achilas Maser. Meis Benami Levi, that son passes away. She reverts back uh, two steps, two steps back. Back to the Kayan, or his son, who he left behind. Toicha Betruma, so now she's enabled for Teruma. Meis Benami Kayan, but if that son passes away as well, she's back to square one. Loi Toicha Loi Betruma, Veli Maser, she can't access Truma or Maser because she's a Bas Yisrael. She lost all her Truma and Maser privileges. So this part of the Mishnah discussed a Bas Yisrael married to a Kayin, Levi, and Yisrael successively. Now we can do a flip image. Bas Kayin, Shin Yisrael. You're starting with an Isha from a Kayin family. Who can eat Truma? But since she married a Yisrael, Truma, she cannot access Truma on account of her husband. Mace, husband passes away. Velahi Menu Ben leaves behind his son. She's still bound to that status. No truma. She moves on to the next fellow, who happens to be a levi. Nisus levi. She can have master on account of her husband. He passes away, but leaves behind a son who is a levi. She maintains that status. She can continue eating master. Nisus lekayin. She moves on to the kayin, third husband. Now she's been upgraded. She's enabled for truma. He passes away, but leaves behind a son. She maintains that connection, that identity, and therefore, she can still access Truma. Now, if the children pass away one by one, she sort of successfully goes back one step at a time. This last child from the Kayin passes away. She's now disconnected from Kahuna. She's back to Levi. She can't have Truma, but she can have Master. Meis Bnami Levi, but that son, who fed her the master, passes away. Now, she can no longer have master. But she can't go back home. 
Because remember, husband number one, the Yisrael, left behind a son. But if that son passes away, now she's back home. On this case, the Pasuk says, if she was married, but did not marry to have children, or the child passed away, she no longer identifies with that family, she's disconnected, disengaged, she goes back home, as in her youth, and she partakes from her father's bread. Says the Gemara, Let's go back to that first case. Bas Yisrael, married a kai. She has Truma. She passed, he passed away, left behind his son. She continues Truma. She moves on to Levi. At this point, she has to stop Truma. And even if he passed away, but he left behind a Levi's son, she maintains that uh, limitation, that restriction. But if that son, that son from Levi passes away, she goes back a step. What was the previous step? She was unable to truma because of the son that she had from the Kayan. Meis Pnomi Levi. The Levi's son passes away. And the son from the first husband, the Kayan, is still here. She is truma enabled on account of that son. Toichal betruma. She has truma dehadru achal. She can go back and have truma vishon bena because of that son. How do you know that's true? Once you uh, lose that privilege, who says you get it back? After all, she's a Bas Yisrael. She was eating truma because of the husband. Then on account of that child. Then she lost truma because she was married to the Levi. But then she disengaged from the Levi. Who says she can revert back? It's not like she's going back home to her father the Cain. Her father is Yisrael. Who's to say she can go back to her, her earlier status where she was eating on account of that son, the son the Cain. How do you know that works? The Pasuk is speaking about the, uh, the um, Isha eating the, the Truma. There's an extra, it uh, uses the word Bas and adds an extra Vav, that's a Drasha, to include this type of case as well. Are you in line with only Shittas Rabbi Kiva who expounds on the Vavs but not the Rabbanan who don't Darsh on the Vavs? In this case, even the Rabbanon would agree to this derasha. Kulo ubas yisera, kro yisera, who because the Pasuk already speaks about a, a bas koyim. Why even mention ubas again? It's redundant. Extra word to include this case. Tana Rabbanon. Kishiyicha yiseras. Let's focus on the ikar uh, din of the, of the Pasuk. A bas koyim left home, married to Yisrael. She was divorced, widowed, with no children. She's completely disengaged. She goes back home. What does she go back home for? She can have her father's teruma, or perhaps even the chazev shaykh, those portions taken from the karbonis, which her father eats. Does she get that as well? Answer is no. Kishi chazeres, when she reverts, when she goes back home, chazeres la truma, she can start eating truma once again, but ve'ena chazeres la chazav shaykh, but not those things. Amar of chizda, amar vina, bar shila, micra, which pasuk is this based on? Why do we differentiate between truma and kachin? Pasuk says, "He be truma sakachim loy soichel." She cannot have the truma sakachim, and we learn be muram min akachim loy soichel things that are separated from the karbonas, i.e., chazav shayik. That's not meant to be fed to the isha who comes back home after having married a Yisrael. Rav Nachman, Omar Rabba Baravua, he has a different mocker. It says, "Mi lechem avia toichel, mi lechem selective, v'loy kol lechem." Only some her father's food can she partake in prat lechazav shayik, except for these items. So truma, yes, but not these. Maskev la rami barachama. How do you know to exclude chazav shayk? True, there's a miyot, but maybe the miyot is prat, ema prat la forest nadar. Perhaps the Pasuk is telling you. I don't think just because she comes back to eat the truma, her father sort of takes a hold of her and she's back under his jurisdiction, in which case he can nullify her, her vows, just as he did before she left him. Maybe that's all the Pasuk is telling you, but... When it comes to feeding her, when it comes to supporting her, she can access anything he accesses. Amarava, well, for that you don't need a Pasuk. And apparently this Pasuk is left to teach us what we're looking for. Because your concept that a father can no longer be made for an Adoram, that's already been taught elsewhere. For a Pasuk, we find in a Brisa, 
that was taught in the base Medrash of Rabbi Shmuel, that there was another mocker for this, this Tanad Vedabi Shmuel. The Pasuk says of Neder, Almana Ugrusha Yakim Another, expressed by an Almana, by a Grusha, stands. Matamad Laima, what's the, the point of this Pasuk? Isn't it obvious? She isn't under her father's jurisdiction, nor is she under her husband's control. She's an Almana, she's a Grusha. Why would anybody interfere with her in the She's out of her father's domain. She's out of her husband's domain. So why would anybody do a forest in the Durham? So it's pretty clear from Tonad Rishmol that once you leave your father's possession, so to speak, he no longer has the rights to do a forest in the Durham. That's pretty clear. So what then is the Pasuk trying to teach us? What is the Chiddush expressed by the Pasuk? Ella, rather, for the following case. Suppose father gave over his daughter Lishluchi about to the emissaries coming on behalf of the husband. So she sort of left his position but hadn't yet been taken over by the husband. All the father's Shliach gave it over to the husband's Shliach. So she hadn't yet gotten married. She's on the way. And something happened along the way. She became an Almana. She became a Gerusha. So what happens now? How do I categorize her? How do I classify her? What din do I apply? Base of Is she still considered part of her, of her father's household? Because she hadn't really left him completely. She hadn't really gotten married yet. Or perhaps it is considered as though she had already entered her husband's domain. In which case, father cannot uh, do anything with her in the Durham. So which way is it? The Pasuk is telling you, Allah, Kivan shayata shoachas meshusa'av that's exactly what the Pasuk is telling you. Once she leaves her father's uh, domain, even, even just for a short moment, even if she wants to come back, it's not. It's not the way it was. She already lost that right. He can't do a forest in the Torah. So clearly, once an Isha leaves her husband's uh, father's uh, jurisdiction, especially if she's already married to somebody else, and then something happens and she comes back, the, the classic halacha that a father can interfere with her uh, with her in the dharm doesn't apply in this case. So that's already known from elsewhere and therefore when the Pasuk says when she comes back oh, mi lecha mavia, only something, not everything it's not coming to tell you that he can't do a forest in the dharm that's posh, that's self-evident. Rather the Pasuk is food related. Truma, yes but not the chaz of Rav Safra Amar he has a different uh, diuk. It says, Milechem avia toichel. Lechem, specifically bread. Uloi basar, but not basar, which is the car. Rav Papa Amar. Milechem avia toichel. Means lechem hakonel liavia. The foodstuffs that's in his possession, that's considered his personal property, such as teruma. But carbon? That doesn't really conform. Prat lechaz of That's different. Even though her father gets it, you know where he gets it from? sort of eat off Hashem's table. Let's go to Rashi, beautiful Rashi. Right before the wide lines, you'll see about three, four lines up, Rashi begins by saying, Truma He draws a line between Truma and Karban. Truma is gifted to the Kayhanim. It's not considered leftovers of Hashem's table. Right? The, the farmer gives the Truma to the Kayan. It's his. Aval shiyori kachem, but leftover of the carbonis. Harihen ke masas mev eis pnei elokim. Shehen shiyori shulchan. It's like a gift directly from Hashem to the coin, coming off Hashem's table, so to speak. Hashem's beis hamigdash, Hashem's mizbech, over to the coin. They're sort of eating at his table. And when the pasuk says she can go back and have her father's bread, what's considered her father's personal bread? Only the truma. 
The Rav Amar, he has another mocker. Arna can have all these things, you, your children, with you. Only when they're with you, as opposed to your daughter who had already married out. She can't really join you for the meal. Amar Vada Barava. Tana, we learned in a Braisa. Kishi Chayzeris Lebe Savia. So certainly when the Isha comes back home to her father's Kayan uh, household, Chayzeris Le Truma, she comes back to Truma, Ve'ena Chayzeris Le Chazay Veshaik, but not to the other items. That's when she's eating on account of her father. But, Bishvil Bena. But you remember. In the beginning of the Gemara, we spoke about an Isha coming back to her son. A different situation. She's not really a, a Babas Kohen. She's a Yisraelis, but she was married to a Kohen. They had a son. She ate everything on account of this son. Then she went over and married somebody else, but then she left that person and comes back to her son. And that allows her to eat again, as we explained, right? This allows her to eat anything. There's no restrictions. It's different than when she comes back home. Bishvil Beno. If the sun enables her, then it's all across the board. Chazer is af That's a chiddush. Also, Rav Mordechai. So he went. Amr l'shmata. He gave over this halacha. Kamei de Ravashi. To Ravashi. Omar, and he asked. He challenged it. Look. Meichok misrabia. How do you even know this is true, that she can come back and start eating again on account of her son? Me'ubas, that was the drasha we had before. It's the Pasuk that discusses the Isha goes back home, but there's an extra letter or word to include this type of case. Well, how can it be better than the original? Mi adi, follow me no. The classic example, the uh, topic of this Pasuk is the Isha goes back home and eats on account of her father. And there you have the restriction, no chaz The halacha that you derive from this Pasuk can be better than the original halacha? The halacha that is derived, i.e., that she can come back and eat on account of her son. That's going to allow more? Says the Moriah. How some ksivi miyuti? Because the miyut that we have, all these psukim relate to an issue going back home. Hacha, but over here, when she's eating on account of her son, like ksivi miyuti, we don't have the miyut. Therefore, she's unrestricted. Baskoin shinis is l'sro v'chu. Tan rabon, v'shov al b'savir. A baskoin. Married out. She separated, she comes back home, she can have her father's truma. Prat, as opposed to Lushamir Siyabam, she's awaiting Yibam to a Yisrael that binds her to him. She's not considered back home, and therefore she cannot yet have Tiruma. Basak says, Kinorea. She goes back home like in her youth, in the same form, in the same situation. Prat the Mubaris, as opposed to if she's, uh, she's uh, carrying an unborn child. From a Yisrael. She can't just go back home and have Turuma. It's not Kinu Rea. Now, why do you need a Pasuk for this? Well, I didn't. We can just learn it from a Kavachimer. It's so obvious that once she's expecting from the Yisrael, she's bound to him. Why? Uma Bemak. Interesting Kavachimer. We're going to draw a parallel. We're going to build a Kavachimer based on a halacha that we find by Yibum. And we're going to compare it to the Achilas Truma. Uh, topic at hand. Uma b'mokem. Take a look at Yibum, which is a mokem shaloi also vlad minarishin. The Torah did not reckon the child from the first husband as though he was the child from the second husband. Kivlad minashemi. Which means like this. An Isha married Reuben. They had a child. Everything went well. He passed away. And then she married Shimon. He left without children. Well, I had a child from Reuven. That's irrelevant. Yibam is personal. This fellow Shimon left without children. So the Torah does not reckon with the child from the first husband and apply it to the second husband. Le poiturim and Yibam to exempt it from Yibam. Of course not. So, despite the fact that it has that sort of disadvantage, we don't reckon with her child. We look at him, not at her, right? So, it has that disadvantage, so to speak, but still, also, Uber ki yolad, the Torah considers an unborn child as though he was already born. Meaning that 
a fellow passes away without children, but his wife is still Muberes, no Yibam takes place. So we reckon with this Uber. So again, if by Yibam we find a disadvantage regarding that halacha, still, we reckon with a Muberes. Certainly over here by Teruma, an hour suki, Makam Shasa, Vlad ben Arishan, Kvlad ben Ashengi. The Torah does reckon with a child from the first husband. Even if she's currently married. If she was married to a second husband. We reckon with the son from the former husband. That's the whole Mishnah, right? She married a, a Kayin, they had a child. Then she married a, a Levi, and he passed away. She reckons with the child from the first husband. She, she's not able to achilles truma. She's allowed, allowed to access truma. Even though she's already... She's already moved over to the second husband. So by Truma, we reckon with the first husband. Let's say uh, the first husband was a Yisrael. She had a child from him. She was a Kehenna. She married Yisrael and had a child. She cannot eat Truma. Even if she then went over and married a, another husband who passed away on her, she's bound to that child from the first husband. And she cannot eat Truma because... That child is Yisrael. So, Mokim Sha'asa Vlad Min Arishan. Kivlad Min Ashen. Le Pois Lumina Truma. In our Sugi, where we see the Torah considers the child from her former husband to disable her from Truma. Eino, it didn't certainly. Shanas Uber Kiyalat. Of course, we should consider, we should reckon with an unborn child from the Yisrael to hold her back from going home and having Truma. So, this halacha can be learned through the Kavachim. We don't need a Pasuk. Why well, says the Gemara? It's not a valid kavachemer. Mali asa uber kiyolid, linen yibum. Because although you find that in a yibum context, we reckon with a uber, that's because it has another advantage. We find an element that is featured by yibum, not found elsewhere. Sharei asa mason kechayim. The Torah considers a mace like a chay. What does that mean? A person passes away, but left behind a son. His wife is not. Yibum enabled, right? The son passes away. Does her status change? No. We reckon with that child even though he's no longer here. It all depends on the situation at the point of his passing. So it's sort of like we're doing Tchiyas Mason, we're reckoning with a child who's really no longer here. So by Yibum there's that added advantage. So maybe an Uber is also reckoned with as opposed to by by, by Truma we don't find this concept of Mason Kachayim just the opposite when the child passes away she's, she's been liberated so Nas Uber Kiyolod Linian Truma who's to say that we should consider an Uber as though he was born and reckon with him when it comes to Truma related concepts where we find a disadvantage Shaloy also Mason Kachayim we find a deficiency we find that by Truma we don't have the concept of Mason Kachayim Right? The whole sugi is based on the concept that if a child passes away, she's no longer bound to that connection. So perhaps you would not consider a mulberis with respect to psal truma. Talmud Leimar, that's why we need a pasuk in Orel. Only if she's back home as she was earlier. Prat mulberis as opposed to a case where she's a mulberis. She's still bound to the, the husband, the child that she's carrying, which is a Yisrael, and she can't go back home to have truma. So the Prophet tells you that in both cases, she cannot go back home to Truma. Either if she has a child from the Israel or even Mubaris. Binds her and limits her abilities. Now why do we need to both Pesukim? Child and Mubaris. V'itzrech l'michtav Mubaris, v'itzrech l'michtav v'zera e'inla. Torah has to tell you both concepts. A child ties her in and so does Ibor. Because there's an element in one unfound in the other. If only from that pasuk, I would say, yeah, a child. That has significance. A child. It's something tangible. And that connects her to the Yisrael concept and doesn't allow her to have truma. Initially she was one body, now she turned into two. Meaning you have to reckon with this child who's a Yisrael. But if she's merely expecting, 
initially and presently she's only one body, perhaps she doesn't undergo a status change. Maybe she doesn't have to reckon with the Ibur. She can have her father's truma tricha. The Pasuk has to tell you, no, even Imu Beres is considered to have undergone a status change. Because of Rahman Imu Beres, if only mentioned Imu Beres, Dimikara Gufa Srika, I'd say, sure, over there, look at her. Initially, she was a Gufa Srika, Rash says, Reka, empty. Vashta Gufa Mali, now she's Mali. Her appearance changed. That's a significant change, which generates a status change as well. But the concept of a child, well, that doesn't necessarily affect her. Initially, she was an empty body, now as well. Emily, perhaps she doesn't have to reckon with this child who's a Yisrael. She could just ignore him and go back home to have her truma tricha. That's why the Pasuk has to say both. There's a chiddush in each one. Simon This is a, a forerunner of the next Gemara which is going to sort of tackle many of these concepts that we just mentioned and try to undo them by way of a Kavachim. We're going to uh, compare uh, Achilas Truma to Yibam. Because there were elements found in one, not found in the other. We're going to sort of work them through. Amr Lei Rav Yehuda made is Karta. That was named Lerava. He asked Rav Akash. Perhaps uh, the, the notion that by Yibam we reckon with even a mace. Right? We, we explain this. A person passes away, left behind a, a child, and the child was mace. Perhaps this wife um, should now turn into a Yivama. Who's to say that a mace is reckoned with? We treat him as always alive. As though the man left behind a child. Why not? By way of Kavachim. Because remember, by the Achilas Truma, we don't Consider a mesim kechaim. So perhaps the same should apply to Yibam. Uma b'makim she'asav lad min arishin. Kib lad min asheni. Lo pois lo min atruma. Since we find that by dine truma, we reckon with a child from a former husband. As we explained throughout the sugi, it's clear that that's what happens. And doesn't allow it to have truma on account of that son but way back when from the Yisrael. So we reckon with that child, so it has a sort of an advantage that we reckon with that child still we don't reckon with a child who passed away. That's clear from the whole sugi, right? So certainly by Yibam, We don't say, well, you had a child from Reuven, um, so even though Shimon passed away childless, you're pata from Yibam. No, it's personal. Shimon left no children. So we don't reckon with that child. So since we find this sort of disadvantage, of course, isn't it obvious? We shouldn't apply the the, the, the concept of mesim kachaim. We should compare it to truma, where we don't reckon with a child who passed away. So basically, what you mean to say is, Reuven passes away, but left behind a child. At this point, his wife is not yibum enabled. There's no there's no need for yibum. There's a child, and that child passes away. The yibum should be reactivated. Or I should say activated uh, for the first time because right now he's he's uh, he's left behind no children. That's why we have a pasuk. It's a good kavachem. The pasuk undoes that notion. Showing the ways of the Torah pleasant and peaceful. And Rashi explains it's totally unpleasant and unbecoming that an isha after. Um, you know, after years down the road, she's already married, and suddenly, oh my, she needs to have chalitza. As she says, it's it's gonna make it uncomfortable to her husband. It's not the way. It's not the way of the Torah, not the way of Hashem. So once she's potter, she's potter. So that uh, undoes that. Havamina asks the Gemara further. Let's go the other way. Let's apply the concept of dead is alive by truma. Meaning, even if the uh, child from the uh, Israel or the kindness is passed on, reckon with him as always here, and she can maintain the same halacha that she had while he was around. If we find by Yibam that we don't reckon with the child from the former husband, from the previous mar- marriage, it has no effect whatsoever on her marriage with the second husband. Still, also, 
We consider the mace as always alive, as we explained. So certainly, Makam Sha'asa Vladman Rishan, Kivladman Ashin, Lipaisana Truma. By Truma, we find that we reckon with the children of the former marriage. To invalidate her from Truma. Eilu then, of course, Shanasa Mesim Gechai, we should apply that concept as well. So even if the child passed on, consider him as if he's here. His effect is still felt. Talmud Loi Mar, the Pasuk says, Vizera Einla. She married. And there's no children. She goes back home. Vo'ela, she has no child. Sure, he was around, but he's no longer here. Continues the Gemara. What about the other way? Vanasa Vlad Menarishin. Vlad Menasheni. Let's challenge the other halacha. Let's go back and question the concept of Vlad Menarishin by Yibam. Let's consider the Vlad Menarishin, Kivlad Menasheni, Lini Nibu. Which means if she married Reuben, she had a child. Then she married Shimon, and he had no children. Perhaps we should reckon with that child from the first marriage, and there shouldn't be, should not be any yibum. The fact is, uh, you know, there's a child here from the, from the, from this isha, whatever the svar would be, and there should be no yibum. Why would I say that? Mikavochaimer. Once again, based on a kavochaimer. Mamba makim shalei asa mesim kachaim. Lina truma. Since by truma we find a deficiency, we don't consider the child who passed away as always here. Still, us of Vlad Benarish, Vlad Benasheni, we reckon with any child from any former marriage, Mokim Sha'asam Esim Gachaim, Linian Yibam, certainly by Yibam, we reckon with a child even if he's no longer here. Eino Din, of course, Shana'asa Vlad Benarish, Vlad Benasheni, we should reckon with any child even from a former marriage, Tamaloimar, Uben Ein Loi. What trigger is Yibam? He has no children when he passes on. Well, anyway, he doesn't have any children. The other child, that was from her, her first marriage. That's unrelated to the second husband. Continues the Gemara, one more kasha. Perhaps by truma, we should not reckon with a child from a previous marriage. Why? Since we find by yibam that we reckon with a child even after he passed away. We consider him to be here. We don't reckon with a child from a former marriage. Certainly by Truma. By Truma, we don't reckon with a child after his passing. He's got to be here to affect his mother. So since it has this, this advantage, perhaps we should apply the other halacha as well. Isn't it? Logical. We shouldn't reckon with a child from a previous marriage. We should only look at the, her current situation with a recurrent husband, a recurrent family. That's what the Pasuk says. She goes back home if she has no children. The fact is, she has a child. Whether it's from this husband or the other husband, she is bound to that child and whatever he represents. So bottom line is, we have three concepts. And the question is, when do they apply? We discussed Yibum, we discussed Achilas Trum. So Mu'uberas, that's something applicable to both. By Yibum, Isha Mu'uberas doesn't need Yibum. By Truma, if she's Mu'uberas, she's still bound to whatever that Uba represents. Mason Kichayim, that's unique to Yibam. So if the child from the uh, his husband who passed away it was here for a while and then he passed away, the mother does not eat Yibam. However, by Teruma, once the child passes away, she doesn't reckon with him. She can just ignore him and go back home. What about a child from a previous marriage? So by Yibam, it has no ramifications whatsoever with respect to the second husband. If he left behind no children, his wife needs Yibam. But by Achilas Truma, any child that she had, whether from this husband, a former husband, or twice removed, <laughs> right? She can go from one to the next. As long as she has a child somewhere down the line, she has to reckon with that child. And is bound to the halacha that he represents. Hadron halacha ishmataris. An Isha's husband left town. They came and they informed her some tragic news. You should know your husband passed away. Rashi points out 
on the spot, he says, was not speaking about many people telling her, even though the Mishnah uses the words Bol Amr, which sounds like many people came to testify, but was speaking that really there was only one witness, one eight. So he came and he tells her, your husband passed away. Venisus, and she remarries. It turns out to be a big mistake. Then her husband shows up. What happens now? She must leave the second husband, Shimon. Well, it's obvious. And she loses the first husband as well. She needs to get from both husbands. Why? Says Rashi. It's about seven, eight lines from the top. Speaking that there was one aide telling her this news. As the Gemara will prove from the second part of the Mishnah, was speaking, over here was speaking about one aide. Turns out his testimony is mistaken. Why? She's like an ordinary Ishes Ish who committed to us. You don't treat her like an Anusa, like it was done against her will. Like she's faultless. No. Although, we have a kasha, because although the Chachamim did give credence to even one eight when it comes to Eidus Isha, we don't want to hold her back from marriage. You know why they believed in Eidechad? Typically, we don't need, we don't believe in Eidechad. Time of my why, Mishum Dehi Gufa Daika. We are relying on her investigative abilities. She'll be Madaik Adiyada Bekushta. Until she verifies and confirms 100% that in fact her husband passed away. Uminsba and that will prompt her to remarry. And this Isha, who evidently didn't do a good job investigating this matter further, Kansila will play a knas. And look what kind of knas continues the Mishnah. She loses both husbands. She needs a get. She loses all her financial claims. No ksuba, v'le paris. Even the paris that her husband ate, she can't get it back. V'le mezoyne, she doesn't pay her bills. V'le beloys, the items that got worn out, she doesn't take them back. She has no claim, not on Reuven or on Shem. If she should take any of these things from any husband, she has to return it. Vavlad mamzer mizeh Child born from either husband is a mamzer. Now, child born from number two, which is Shimon, of course is a mamzer, because she turns out to be an Asian sish. Rashi says, child born from Reuven, if he should take her back now, is a mamza midrabon. If either husband is a kain, they cannot tend to her burial. Nor are the, the husbands entitled to what a husband is typically entitled. She finds something, doesn't go to the husband. Anything that she earns. They can interfere with her in a dorm. Her furthermore, if she was a regular Isha Bas Yisrael, on account of this incident, she can't marry a Kayan. We treat her as a Zaina. Ubas Levi Master. She's a Bas Levi, she can't have Master. Ubas Koyim not Trum. She's a Bas Koyim, she can't have Trum. Furthermore, the Yershin shall Ze. The Yershim of either husband do not have a Yerusha rights. They're not Yershin as Ksuva. So now the Kasha is why would they be Yersh Ksuva? There is no Ksuva. The Gemara will deal with this Kasha. If either husband passes away, brothers of the husbands cannot do yibum cholzin v'leimiyabin. Only chalitza is allowed. Rabbi Yisi disagrees. Rabbi Yisi Omer ksuva, so she gets a ksuva al nixi balarishin from her first husband's property. Rabbi Lezer Omer harishin zakeh b'metzi asa over masu yadeh b'first in the rear. First husband is considered a legitimate husband. He gets the, all the rights the metzi etc. Rabbi Shimon Omer. With respect to Yibam as well, be Asa Echalit Sosa Ma'achav Shal Rishon Petera Sarasa. If husband number one, Ruven, passes away without children, a proper Yibam or Chalitza can take place. And it exempts the, you know, the Yitzara, the contemporary wife, is considered a proper uh, procedure. Ve'ein Havlad Menu Mamzer. If Ruven takes her back, the child born is not a Mamzer. Now, as Rashi explained, up until now we spoke about a tragic situation where an Isha relied on the testimony of an Eidechot. In which case, the Chachamim, or shall we say the Bezdin, allows her to remarry, banking on the fact that she'll investigate. However, suppose two Edom came along. She remarried without the explicit permission of the Bezdin, meaning she didn't need Bezdin's permission. There were two Edom. Now it's a different story. Now she's not really at fault as much as the first case because she didn't have to investigate. 
We have two two Adam. Tell me about what happened. So if this mishap occurred on account of two Adam, Muteras Lachsaloy, she can go back to the first husband. Now what about a carbon chatas? After all, she committed znus. True, it wasn't bemated chas v'shal. It was b'shoikik, but is there a chiyav chatas? It depends one. It's almost a paradox. In the first case, we, uh, she, where she's deemed more guilty than the second case, because as we explained, we relied on her investigative efforts, which didn't pan out to be successful. In that case, where she married on account of the aiders of one aid, and Bezin allowed her to remarry. So since she did it in accordance with Bezin's instructions, there was no carbon. Because after all, when a person does a chet on account of Bezin's instruction, this is discussed in the Masechus Herius, there's no carbon. It's not by private transgression. It was authorized through Bezin. So this is P. Bezin in the erasure, where there was an aid and Bezin gave her the green light. Tetzi, of course, she has to leave the husbands, but Uptur ben carbon, there's no carbon. However, in the Sefer, where there were two Adam. So on the one hand, we're not really holding her at fault. In fact, is she, the fact that she doesn't suffer all those consequences. Right? We don't penalize her because there were two Adam. So Loinis is Abhi Bezin. She married because of the two Adam. So she didn't really have Bezin's authority. So Tetzi, she has to leave the second husband. But Vechayevas Bekarvan, she's not really penalized, but she has to bring a carbon. After all, she committed an Avera B'Shaykik, and it was of her own doing. Through the Eidah, but there was no Bezin involved. So we see that Yafe Koyach Bezin, Shepoitra Min HaKarbim. We see the, the power of Bezin, the far-reaching powers of Bezin, that when a person does something on account of Bezin's instructions, there's no carbon. Here comes the interesting Chiddush. Hayru Bezin Li Nase. Suppose Bezin gives her the green light, go get married. Instead of getting married, she acted inappropriately. She interacted with somebody as married, but in an inappropriate way. In this case, when her husband returns, she needs to bring a carbon. What do you mean? I thought she had Bezin's permission. Well, Bezin gave you the right to marry, not to get involved with a man in a non-marriage context. That's a chiddush. Now the Gemara will prove that, in fact, the opening Allah and the Mishnah is speaking about her having remarried on account of the Eidus of one eight. Why? Because the Sefer says, In the second case, she married without Rishos. We don't penalize her. She can go back to Ruven. What does Shaloi Rishos mean? Shaloi Rishos Bezin. She didn't need the explicit permission of Bezin because, because we had two Eidus. Michlal apparently, the Reisha, the first case of the Mishnah, which is a different case, a different result, is speaking Berushus Bezin. It was with the explicit authority of Bezin because she needed the authority. She needed that, that green light because it was only Ubeidech, only one aid. As we explained, as we saw in Rashi. So apparently, one aid has the ability to allow an Ashish Ish to go remarry? That's a Chiddush. Alma id echad neeman, when it is believed, the neeman, but to nami, in fact, we have the same in a Mishnah. That an aid is neeman to allow an Isha to remarry. Husuk was established, Lias Nasiyan, to allow an Isha to remarry. Aid and Piyad, if there was testimony coming from even one aid, in the name of a different aid, sort of second hand information, Isha and Piyisha, an Isha quoting another Isha, Isha and Piyad, an Isha quoting an Evid, that this fellow passed away, or Piyashivcha, or she's coming from a Shivcha. Alma id echad neeman, apparently an aid echad. Carries weight in terms of Imatur and Eshes Ish. With Tananami, we find the same in a different Mishnah regarding a different halacha that we believe in Eidechad. Eidechad, Oimer, Achalta, Chelev. Reuben approaches Shimon, look, I know you ate a piece of Chelev, you have to bring a carbon. Oimer, Lo Yechalta, this is what he's talking about, I never had that piece. Potter, you can compel him to bring a carbon because it's sort of one against one. Time of the Oimer, Lo Yechalta, that's only because he denied. And contradicted, ha ishtak. But if he were to remain silent, mehemen, then we say Reuben the edechad is to be believed. Alma edechad mehemen. Apparently, one aid is to be believed. To the point that Shimon has to bring a carbon, and we treat it like a regular carbon. 
Midaraisa Minolam. How do we know that Minatura? There's a concept of an Eid Echad with Ne'emanas. The Sani. Oy, Hoida, I love Chatosa. A person who will become aware of his transgression, he brings a carp. It has to be personal. It has to be initiated by the sinner himself. Others can't inform you. A carbon is personal. A personal expression of remorse is not something that somebody can compel and force you to do. Yachal, perhaps this applies even if I'm not denying it. The Yipata will be pata from a carbon. The Pasuk says, Oy hoi da elav mekomokam. Oy hoi da elav is a riboy. Any which way, where the, uh, the person becomes aware of his misdeed, he brings a card. So you can't uh, force yourself upon him, you can't force him to bring a card, but if he uh, is in agreement, then he, uh, and he goes along with it, that's called Hoida Elov, that is sufficient to allow him to bring a card. Now, what exactly happened here? Hey, Chidami, what's the case? Always speaking that two Adam arrive and tell him that he had his chilev. And he's not in denial. He says, look, I'm not sure. I don't know. Thank you for uh, your information. And this the Pasuk says. He has to bring a carbon. Well, isn't that obvious? Why would you need a Pasuk for that? He's uh, totally agreeable. Oh, it must be. Then instead of two Adam, there is really only one. Telling him about his chilev. And what is the Pasuk telling you? And if he's not in denial, he is believed. If he just shrugs his shoulders and he, he says, Look, I don't know. The aid is to be believed and he can bring a car. But it's right from here. And that even one aid is to be believed at times. Says so, the was speaking about this type of case. Maybe this fellow is admitting. To the facts. So it's really his initiation. How do you know it's on account of the testimony offered by the eight? Perhaps the fellow is just remaining silent. And silence here is interpreted as admission. Tesha says, look, he doesn't know for sure, but you know, he had some question mark as to what happened, and now when he hears from this aid that, look, uh, this confirms what he was thinking all along, and really it's his own feeling. It's his own initiation that's bringing the carbon. Teda, I'll even prove it to you. That the, the Allah is based on shtika koida. Silence is tantamount to admission. The Tony is safe. Look at the next part of the price. Two fellows approach him. You ate chelav. You chayv a carbon. He denies it. I didn't eat it. Potter, he doesn't bring a carbon. Rabbi Mir mechayv. Rabbi Meir says, sure he does. Omer Rabbi Meir, in fact, have a couple of to back it up. If two Aiden can generate Misa on a person, by way of their testimony against him in the Bezin, should they not bring him to a carbon which is not as severe as Misa? Of course they can. They have that power. Omer Rabbi Meir responded to that by saying, look, you're right, Edemar. Top of the line, but there is a card that this fellow could just pull out on them. You can just say, look, true, true, I had that chilev, but I'll tell you a little secret. It was b'mezid, willfully. What are they going to do about it? <laughs> you can only bring a card if it's b'shegi, and chances are the Aiden are not mind readers, and they can't really prove that it was b'shegi. So that takes, that takes us back to the case in the Reisha as well. Reisha, my time will come, so why when it's one aid? And he remains silent. Does he bring a, a carbon? Is it because the aid has nehmanis, such as you suggested? But as we just said, chances are the aid can't really speak about his state of mind. In fact, you find that even two aid him don't have that power. Two aid him, ba'alma, typically, meaning in any other type of context, when they come testify against the person, the Avagav the Kamakish Lahu, even if I'll deny their account, in Umamni, we take their word for granted, right? Still, when it comes to the context of Karbana, it's the Kapatri Rabbana, but I say he's Potter, as we explained, because they can't prove that it was Bishoyge. So, why would one aid 
be any better? The only solution to this question is Elalav Mishum de Ishtik. Apparently, the aid is Machayev a carbon because we're speaking that he remains silent, and silence is tantamount to admission. Ushtika Kado Damya. So that's the reason. But not as you were saying that, oh, we found a mocker that aid Echad is to be believed at times. No. It's unrelated to his testimony, rather to this fellow's admission. So, bottom line is, where is the source that an Eidechot has Nehmanus? And back to the Kasha and the Mishnah. Why do we allow the Isha to remarry on account of the Eidus offered by one Eid? So, we'll stuck with the Kasha. Bez Hashem, tomorrow, a solution will follow. So, what did we learned today? We spoke about a Isha Bas Yisro. Who married either a Kayan Levi or Yisrael? Actually, she did it in order, right? Kayan Levi and Yisrael. Or you have a Bas Kayan, who likewise married all different types of men. The Lach is, while the husband or child of that husband is still around, she's bound to his status. But otherwise, she goes back home to her father's Truma, but not Chaz of Sheikh. We have five sources in the Gemara for that. When it comes to Yibum, Mace is Kechai. If he left behind the child, even if the child passed on, Yibam is not applied. The Darchina, even at all, is determined at the moment of his death. When it comes to Truma, the child only bound, binds the mother while he's around. But if he's not around, she is um, totally freed and liberated from his, uh, from his halacha. Now, a child of a previous marriage affects the, uh, the Isha status as per her truma, but not when it comes to Yibam. Yibam is personal. It all depends whether this man left behind a child. A state of Mi'uberis is reckoned with in both cases, by Yibam and by Truma. An Isha remarried Bitos. Well, it depends how it happened. By way of an Eidechad, She's penalized all the way because she should have investigated better. But since it was Bezin allowing her to remarry, there was no curve. On the other hand, if two Adam came and allowed her to remarry, we don't apply these penalties, but a carbon she brings because after all, it was her own initiative. When two Adam come and try to impose a chiv, a carbon on somebody, so if he agrees, if he's moida, of course, he'll bring a carbon. But if he uh, denies it, we have a machlekes. By edechad, if he denies, no carbon. If he's in agreement, or shtika kaida, then he'll bring a carbon. But as we left off with the kasha, the Allah and the Mishnah, it's still a little bit difficult to understand why do we allow the isha to remarry on account of the edechad's testimony, something which we don't find throughout the Torah. Why don't we need two edim as we need elsewhere? Whether Hashem will address this tomorrow. Cult of Tua and Hatzlacharaba.